Who is everyone? Let's just take so and so supposed to say everyone in the church. Everyone in the church. Who's everyone in the church? All y'all, right? As my, as my mom would say. You know the difference between y'all and all y'all? I can tell you, they're not from Arkansas. Are you? Y'all, y'all is two or three. All y'all is when the crowd gets bigger than two or three, right? So it's all y'all, right? Um, everyone in the church is all y'all, right? But there are people who are not here today because of the rain. Does everyone include them? Does it? Okay, so it includes everyone who's who's not here because it's raining, maybe, and they couldn't get here. There are some here who are working on the Sabbath who couldn't be here today. Does all y'all include them too? Yes. It does, right? There are some, there are some who are not here today because maybe their church closed and they're still searching for another church. Um, does it include them? Are they part of all y'all? Yes. They are part of it, aren't they? Okay. There are some who are worshiping two blocks up the street and they're not United Methodist. And there are some who are worshiping down the street in the Baptist church. Are they part of all y'all? They are, aren't they? They're part of the body of Christ. Now there are some who don't attend church at all, who um, maybe have not come into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ yet. Maybe, as we would say, they haven't stopped refusing God's grace. Um, and there are those who, who uh, maybe are suspicious of the church because in the culture they came from, uh, in order to get the good things from their culture, you either belong to a church or you did without. And so they're living in our community and they have a mistrust of the church because of the culture in which they came into. I've encountered several of those people in my years here. Um, are they part of all you all? Yes. Yep. They are, aren't they? Um, and how about those that just had no other reason, they just decided to sleep in? Are they part of all you all? What about the ones who are out at the church of the Arrowhead uh, in the rain? Are they part of all y'all? They are part of all y'all, right? So, what I'm asking you today is you think who all y'all are. Do we have a ministry of all y'all? Because that's what Paul is trying to teach Timothy today. That's exactly what Paul is trying to teach Timothy about how what his ministry was, what Paul's ministry was. And since Timothy came from the seminary of Paul, um, he wants Timothy to practice a ministry of all y'all as well. So what does that look like? Well, the very first thing that Paul tells Timothy is to pray for everyone. To pray, I can pray for Janice because I know Janice and I, I pray you know, for things like please don't let arthritis get her knuckles so she can't play the piano. Uh, you know, please when it's snowing let Charlie bring her so that we have piano on snow days. And, um, and I pray for other things as well, like she doesn't strain a muscle in yoga class so that she can't get up the stairs to get the bills so that she can pay our bills for us. Um, someone I really know, and I've come to know her pretty well, I think, over the years, it's easy to pray for, right? It's easy, it's easy to pray for Mary Jane or for Carol Lee or for Laura. People that we know, it's pray for everyone that I know, or was Paul's vision a little bit bigger in the ministry of all y'all? It was a little bit big. He says, pray for everyone. Pray for everyone. And that includes those I know. 
But it also means I should pray for those I don't know, right? We did that this morning. Do I know everybody in Texas? But they're all part of all y'all, right? Isn't that right? Did we just say that? So I prayed for people. I, does it make a difference if I pray for people in Texas? If I pray for those who... It does, doesn't it? Because we believe in the power of prayer. Prayer changes things. Prayer is entering into a, a conversation with the one who can change things, right? So if I lift up my prayers and say, God, I don't know them, but I'm praying for the people in Texas who, who are suffering this morning because their houses were flooded, I can expect God to act on that prayer, amen? I can, now, wait a minute. What about those people in Bahamas that got hit by not one hurricane, but two? They're not part of my country. Will God still listen to my prayers for non-Americans? For those who live in the Bahamas? Yeah, right? Now, they need more than prayers, but I begin with prayer, right? Pray for those you know. Pray for those you don't know. They probably won't ever know that you prayed for them. But they certainly will know the results of your praying for them. Amen. They will know when you pray for people, you can change lives. Just by praying, when you lift people up. But it's going to get even harder. You can pray for someone in Panama, right? Or someone in, in South America. You can pray for someone in Russia. There's a church in Russia. And it's, it's being persecuted right now. Especially in the Ukraine, it's being persecuted right now. And you can pray for the church in the Ukraine, right? That are losing their buildings. The, the government is taking those away. The, the Russian government are, are taking those away with their troops who are there. So you can pray for those people. Now, it's not just that you pray for those people. But can you pray with everyone? Can you? Tammy, right? Right? Okay, Tammy came to church, and she's got an issue. She's just, there's something about it. And, and, Mike, but maybe it's an issue with Mike. <laughs> this is getting better as we go. Okay, she has an issue with Mike. And, She's not quite ready to talk to Mike about that, right? So she comes up to Roy and she says, can you pray with me? That's different than can you pray for me, right? Can you pray with me? Because I don't want to go to prison for murder, right? So I want you to pray with me. Now, Roy has to make a decision. I don't really feel comfortable praying with, with people that I don't know. That makes me a little nervous. I don't know. Or he could say, this is a sister who's in trouble and I need to pray with her. Amen? Right? Yeah. Sometimes the faith makes us uncomfortable. But if you see someone struggling, can you pray with them? Not just for them. Can you pray with them? We had a man in the Hot Meal program yesterday. He came in and he was devastated. I'm telling you, the man was 180 pounds of tears. He, he, he just he cried and he cried. And uh, I prayed with him, but I grabbed two other people as well. And we went over to that man and we listened to his story. And then he prayed with him. It made a difference. It just wasn't saying, Carolee, I want to pray for you and I'll do that. And you never know whether I did or not. It makes a big difference if we grab one another's hands and pray with one another. At home, when we say grace, we hold each other's hands. We want that connection of praying with each other. When we're downstairs at Life for Real, at the end, we hold hands. Uh, and we pray with one another and we, we sing uh, with one another while we're holding hands. There's something about that human contact that makes a difference, right? 
And we do that with everyone, which means if you pray with everyone, at some point, you're going to get asked to pray with someone you don't know. And then can you stand out on your faith and do it? Scary sometimes, huh? You see someone that's devastated and they need you to reach out. They need you to reach out in faith and grab their hand and say, can I pray with you? Not I'll pray for you later. You'll be on my prayer list, but can I pray with you? Goes a little bit further than that, though. So we pray for each other. We pray with each other. Um, then he says that we need to tell about Jesus Christ to everyone. Now, I can talk to Mary Jane about Jesus. I have no trouble about doing that at all. You know why? Because I know she isn't going to be offended. If I talk to her about Jesus, if I say Jesus loves you, that's a very simple witness, right? Jesus loves you. Um, I know she's not going to say, who are you to impose your faith on my life? Okay. I walked up to a fellow in cross lines. I didn't know him the other day. He was standing in line for breakfast. Didn't know him, but I stopped and I put my hands on his shoulder and I said to him, you know what? Jesus loves you and so do I. He kind of looked at me like, you, you're strange. You're strange. <laughs> But he, you know, he ended up saying, he didn't say, you're strange. He ended up saying, thank you. Something I didn't expect, right? But something stopped me. Oh, Jim Salim, the first time I met Jim, I didn't even know his name yet. And I walked up to Jim and I leaned over the table and said, God's got a word for you. And, you know, Jim can be pretty imposing. And, uh, but it rocked him back on his chair. And he said, yes, sir, because he didn't know me either. I said, God wants you in church tomorrow. Tomorrow. Now, he could have said, well, that's the only reason you feed people down here, isn't it? So you can get people in church. I know what you're trying to get. But he didn't. You know what happened? Jim ended up in church the next day, the very next day, to tell everyone about Jesus, to tell everyone about our faith, to share the good news. It is good news, isn't it? Is, isn't the story about Jesus good news? Yes. So what do you do? Keep the good news to yourself? Boy, I tell you what, I had my 16th grandson this week, right? 16th grandchild. His name is Elijah. And I took that picture out that I have on my cell phone. I was going, see, number 16. Number 16. Here's number 16. This is Elijah. He's also going to be the third generation of, of preachers. Because I'm going to see to it. Right? And I told his Baptist preacher father that I was going to do everything in my power to convert this guy to Methodism. Uh, and, and get him back on the right track. And... Um, he just smiled and said, not a chance, not a chance, right? So if I would be that excited, if I would be that excited to tell people about a new grandchild, how much more excited should I be to tell everyone about Jesus? Yes? I mean, there were people that didn't know me from Blue that know who Elijah is now. Could I show that picture everywhere? But I'm scared. I've got 16 grandchildren and my youngest is named Elijah and incidentally I know Jesus too. Why are we apologetic about our faith? Why are we afraid to, to share the good news? It is good news. I want to, right? Tell them, shake your head. It's good news, isn't it? We have so much trouble sharing the good news of Jesus Christ we can share other good news. Why not the good news of our faith? Why not the good news of our Savior? Pray for everyone. Pray with everyone. And tell everyone about Jesus. The last thing that Paul tells Timothy is you go out and do Jesus before everyone. You do the good of Jesus to everyone. Now, who doesn't deserve the good of Jesus?
Who doesn't deserve the good of Jesus, right? I mean, here in this church, you know, we, we feed people, we clothe people, we find people jobs, we do resumes for people, we get bus passes for people. All the things that we do, that's doing the good of Jesus. The trick is to do it outside the walls of the church. Because when you do the good of Jesus to all people, then people see Jesus. Everyone can see Jesus. When you walk around and you live your faith and you truly do visit those who are sick or in prison, when you feed those who are hungry, when you clothe those who are naked, when we do the things to our neighbor that Jesus told us to do, people see the living Christ in us. Amen? In us. When people hear us pray for them, when people feel us pray with them, when people hear us share the good news, and when people see us live out with integrity the good news, they experience Christ. Now, our founder, John Wesley, said one thing. It's the first thing I ever learned that John Wesley ever said. He said, offer them Christ. Offer them Christ. No matter what you do in this life, no matter where you go, no matter what situation you're in, there's no time when you can't offer them Christ. Either through what you say or by what you do, you can offer people Christ to hold someone's hand and pray with them or to pray for them in case they can't pray. How hard is it to say Jesus loves you and so do I. And to mean it, right? You say, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves you and so do I. And they say, I'm hungry. And you say, sorry, I'm just here to pray for your hunger. I'm not here to fill your belly. No one's going to see Jesus, amen? Jesus is lost. But when you say, Jesus loves you and so do I, and you share that bit of good news, Jesus loves you and so do I. Let me pray with you for your hunger and then I'm going to make sure you get fed as well. Right? And then, so that you're not empowering that helplessness, you go out and you help and find a job. If that's what they're looking for. When you go so that they can help themselves, then you've really done something. Amen? Is this an all-y'all church? Is it? Is this an all-y'all church? Are you an all-y'all Christian? This week, go out and live your faith purposely for everyone. In Jesus' name, amen.